What happens if you open the valve on a full scuba tank? Other than being really loud and generating enough thrust to push the tank over, you find that pretty quickly the valve will ice over. Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 34 of the Horizon series and a Happy New Year too. Now, this week we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, one of the potential failure modes we identified for the Horizon launcher itself is the possibility of the fill valve inside of the control box uh, icing over with so much air flowing through it. So we want to see if that's going to become an issue. Uh, the other problem is we don't know how long it'll actually take to fill the rocket, so we'll also do a test. Uh, we've never filled a rocket with so much air before. So let's go take a look. Icing can happen anytime you expand compressed air. This is the Horizon launcher, and here's the main control valve that fills the entire booster and sustainer. Here's a cross section of that valve in the launch controller. High pressure air comes in here and is sealed against the seat here. When we open the valve, the air flows into the valve body, expanding. Now as the air expands, it cools down, cooling down the valve body in turn, and any moisture in that air that comes in contact then can condense and potentially freeze. Now thankfully when scuba tanks are filled, they're filled with dry air, so internal condensation shouldn't be much of a problem. The issue though becomes on the valve stem that runs to the outside and is exposed to atmospheric humidity. Any ice forming on the stem means that it could freeze in place, either stuck open or stuck closed. Being stuck open would be bad as the rocket could overpressurize. So let's have a look at the normal configuration. Here we have a couple of 11 litre tanks that are connected together and these feed through to the main valve in the control box. That then goes into the launcher and the rocket with a total capacity of around 37.5 litres. Now because the rocket is about one third full of water, that gives us an air volume of around 25 litres that will then be pressurised to 1000 psi. For this experiment, we replaced the booster and sustainer with three small empty scuba tanks whose total volume is about 25 litres. So let's set everything up. Here are the two main tanks. They get cross-connected so they can supply air through just one connection. We can see that the tanks are pressurized around 3,800 psi or 260 bar. That's 3,800. Wow. I think they overfilled them a little bit uh, at the dive shop, but we'll take the extra air. Normally these should be around 3,200 psi. Now we can connect the air to the input of the control box. And we can also connect the three small tanks to the output. So the setup we've got here, um, these three tanks represent the volume inside of the booster and the sustainer. So these guys are empty. Uh, they're hooked up to the control panel over here that we'll be filling and these are the two uh, full tanks that we're going to be filling the booster and the sustainer with. Um, so the idea is to basically uh, go through the normal fill procedure uh, and have a look how the valve behaves, what, what temperature it reaches uh, and see if we get any frozen uh, valves or not. So let's go give it a go. I've got to apologize for the background noise. There's a school close by and it was their lunchtime. That's all closed, closed, closed. We have attached a temperature gauge to the GoPro so we can see what temperature is at different times in different places. Do we have pressure? 260 bars. Okay, hang on, let me get a reference temperature again. So we're at 23 degrees on the valve, okay. Okay, temperature starting to drop. We're filling. These are now 27, so they're getting a bit warmer. 13.2, 12. We're filling. 9, 8.8. .8. Starting to get a lot more condensation. 6.6 .6. the manifold is getting chilled that's at 19 15 we're getting lots of condensation now we're 
tanks are at 23. So these are the ones we're emptying. This one's at 21.4. So that one's chilled compared to the one that's being filled is almost 28. Seven degree temperature difference between the tanks. Valve staying at seven degrees, 6.8. 6.4 degrees I still. 450. Wow. So maybe I'll try longer bursts. Yeah. I think so too. Because now it's just filling really slowly, there's a smaller pressure differential. 1000. You can see all the condensation on there. And also on the outlet pipe down here. Okay, so now we're going to let the pressure out. We've closed all the tanks and we're going to do the emergency abort motor, which you'll see down here. No. Yeah. Okay. So here's a plot of the pressure versus temperature of the main valve. As you can see, the temperature drops fairly quickly, but then levels off at around six and a half degrees Celsius as the pressure keeps climbing. And by the end, the temperature started climbing a little as the flow rate had decreased. Now, while icing could be an issue with the valve, we've got the opposite problem in the rocket. If we fill it too quickly, we're going to get increased air compression heating, which can then affect the strength of the epoxy. For this reason, we fill the rocket in bursts, allowing the air to cool in between. We have chosen this arbitrarily, but each burst lasts about 15 seconds, and then we pause the fill for another 15 seconds. We can see that in these tests, it took about 23 and a half minutes to fill the booster and sustainer to full pressure. This is important to know since the rocket's going to be at a considerable pressure for an extended amount of time. This means we're going to need to do longer pressure tests on the individual pressure chambers, not just several minutes. Here is the graph again. The green dashes at the bottom are the timing when the valve was open. As you can see towards the end when the pressure differential was lower, with lower flow rate, we just opened the valve to let the air flow continuously and so it wouldn't take too long. The other important reason to know the fill time is the amount of time we will need to have electronics and cameras powered on so that they can catch the actual launch. Looks like we'll need at least 40 minutes of runtime for everything. Okay, here's some numbers for the setup. A total of about 1725 litres of air was transferred in 23 and a half minutes, giving us an average fill rate of around 73 litres per minute. And the total weight of the air transferred was about 2.23 kilos. So we're going to dry it off. So now we're going to do a second experiment where we've disconnected the uh, external scuba tanks. So all of the air is now going to be free flowing out of the controller and we're just going to keep it on all the time to give us the worst case scenario. So the maximum cooling effect and we're going to drain both of the scuba tanks. There's about 160 bar in those. So we'll just let it free flow and we'll see um, what's the lowest temperature that valve will get to. So let's go give it a go. Okay. Pressure gauge. Go. This whole test took around 7 minutes and 45 seconds. We decided to abort the test as the temperature reached a steady state of around 5.4 degrees Celsius. Oh yeah, that'll chill your beer. <laughs> and what pressure did we get down to? The air left in the tanks was still about 140 bar. So the limiting factor here is the maximum flow rate we were able to achieve. The thing that reduced the flow rate here is the size of the hole in the air spool swivel in the high pressure hoses. These have really tiny holes of around one millimeter. We'll need to increase the size of these holes to allow the rocket to fill a little bit faster.
So as you saw, the icing really shouldn't be a problem. Although the temperatures got down low, they weren't low enough to cause freezing. Uh, one of the surprises though was the duration of the fill. Uh, I think we're going to have to increase the size of the holes in the hose connectors just for better flow rate. Uh, if we could keep it down under 15 minutes, the whole fill, then that would be great. In the next episode, we're going to have a look at repairing the leaks in the nozzles for the booster segments. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs> see Grandpa's forehead, 33. <laughs> Quick host swap time.